the night away. Oh, 
Good afternoon, everyone, and um, hoping that everyone had a wonderful Sabbath. Uh, everyone was blessed with all the messages that we were getting on different platforms today. We are going to start our Vespers program. We are going to start with the word of prayer, and then after the word of prayer, we are going to go into our message for today. After the message for today, then we are going to do our... Um, prayer request and testimonies um, prayer segment after our message for today. So now we will ask Brother Mlungisi if he can hear me to please open with a word of prayer for us and then I will introduce our speaker. Then we are going to start. Brother Mlungisi, if you can hear me. Thank you so much. Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Um, our Father, heaven, we are grateful for the Sabbath you've given us to rest in you, to find peace in you. As we come to wind down the Sabbath, may we continue in your presence. We want to pray for the word as we close the Sabbath. As we're going to continue in this whole program, because um, we pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Um, amen. Amen. Um, thank you. Thank you, Brother Mlungisi. We are going to give over to our speaker today. We've got Brother Ayanda Nomaje, who will be our speaker for our Vespers today. Brother Ayanda Nomaje is going to be our speaker for our Vespers today. We are going to give over to him, and we pray that the Lord uses him as he wants him to deliver the message. Over to you. Uh, brother, okay. Yes. 
All right, let me greet everyone in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, Amen. I was uh, doing some training today. My background uh, has not changed uh, for, for the Master Guide. Otherwise, um, it's all in the, in the same spirit. It's all in the same spirit. I just want to look at a simple text uh, we, that, we, that is popular with all of us, a popular text. With, we go to the book of Romans um, and we go to chapter 8, the verse is uh, 28. Romans chapter 8 is 28. Um, Romans 8, the verse is 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. And we know that all things work together for good to them uh, that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. All right, so um, when we look at this scripture um, written by Paul uh, to, to the Romans, um, for me, Romans chapter eight is the climax of the book of Romans. Um, it is the peak of the book. It is where hope is given without doubt, where the, there is no room for Paul to allow us to remain in doubt for anything that may have been any stress uh, up to this point. Uh, he introduces us to our nature as human beings, that we all are sinners and none of us have escaped a sinful nature, according to Romans chapter three. Um, and then he also gives us the wages of sin being death in Romans six verse 23. And we learn in chapter seven of Romans that there is then a man in Romans chapter seven who struggles uh, with his nature, even when he has come to the knowledge of the truth. So this man in Romans seven, he knows what is right. He knows what is true and he believes in it and he loves it and he hates sin. But this man of Romans chapter seven finds it difficult to keep to what he believes. He finds it difficult to be who he would like to be. And then this man has a cry as Romans chapter 7 is concluded. Oh, wretched man that I am, in verse 24, who shall deliver me from this body of death? And then in 25, glory be to God for Christ, because he died for us. And then he leaves us then in, in open Romans chapter 8. And for us to appreciate uh, Romans 8, 28, this understanding is necessary, that we are coming from a man who says that though we may know the truth, all of us are sinners. Though we may all be sinners, but uh, and the wages of being dead, but there is hope for all of us. And that hope, Romans chapter 6, verse 23, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And then in chapter seven, he then now says, now that for eternal life, and that you now know the truth, um, you must keep according to the law of God. In Romans chapter 12, verse seven, verse, chapter seven, the verses 12 and verse 14, but the law of God is spiritual, but I am unspiritual. The law of God is holy and I am carnal. And then now he then says in Romans chapter eight, Though you know the holy law and you are an enemy to it, but uh, though you may be a wretched, that there is no solution for you except Christ hanging on the cross, except Christ having died in our stead. Then Romans chapter 8 makes it clear for us that in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, there is now therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk after the flesh, but they walk after the spirit. You see, the, 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 the issue here that Paul is trying to drive is that it gets us to escape condemnation 
is we are in Christ Jesus. There is nothing we have done to be in sin and to fall into our sinful nature. You see, uh, we may be legalistic and go to 1 John chapter 3, the verse is 4 up to verse 8, telling us that sin is the breaking of the law. <clears throat> but <clears throat> before, when we then prove what the law is, we'll prove the Ten Commandments. When we then look at the history of the Ten Commandments, they are clearly laid out in Exodus chapter 20, but before that, we can only align God's law to his character. So God gives us the Ten Commandments to bring us back to his character. That is why sin cannot simply be defined by saying you've broken a law. One, one preacher once made an example and said, if you pass a 10 rand coin, and when you are standing and you look and you see a 10 rand coin and you pick it up and you put it in your pocket, thinking you are stealing it, and later, later realize that the note you stole actually fell from your pocket. In our eyes, you have not sinned. No one will punish you. But the spirit of stealing in you is punishable to God. So sin is not necessarily what we do, but the thought of the mind, the condition of the heart, the spirit and the motive behind what we do. Even when we have done that which is right, Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. So therefore, it's not about what you do. It's about the spirit and the motive and the nature and the mindset and the heart from which that which you have done comes from. You see, in heaven, in heaven, they are going to, to be liars that make it to heaven. In hell, there will be liars that make it to hell. Why do I say that? Abraham lied, and we've got evidence of it in the Bible. And yet, Abraham is among the men of faith of Hebrews chapter 11. Why? Because of the motive of his heart and the motive of his, of, of his mind. Therefore, God looks beyond the actions, but the actions follow the heart. It is not the heart that follow the actions. The actions that we, the things we do follow the condition of our heart. Circumstances that we go through, they don't necessarily make us, but they reveal who we are. So sometimes, we claim that I was never like this, but this person made me to be the person that I've been, to be the person that I am. Circumstances, simply press certain bus buttons in our hearts and in our minds and in our lives that reveal the nature of our habits, the nature and the condition of our hearts, because we are all the same until we are tested. But when we look beyond all actions, Paul says, Paul says, the condemnation remains when we remain with our actions. The man of Romans chapter 7 proves that our actions may be clean to the eye, but if the nature of the mind and the heart is not clean, they remain sinful in the eyes of God. In Matthew chapter 5, we learn this that he who hates his brother is a murderer. He who lusts is an adulterer and a fornicator. So therefore to God, it's not about what we have done, but about in whom we do those things. But therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk after the flesh, but they walk after the spirit. Now, Come with me as we come to appreciate the context of Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Then now this same person who is in Christ Jesus uh, does not walk after the flesh, but they walk after the spirit. Now we have a controversy in each and every one of us. The mind of the spirit and the mind of the flesh. Romans 8, verse 5 then says that now... He who is in the spirit follows the mind of the spirit. But he who is in the flesh follows the mind of the flesh. In verse 11, then it tells us that now that 
spirit that raised Christ from the dead is that spirit that lives within us. It is that spirit in the mind that we follow. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. Philippians 2, verse 5. And that same spirit that we follow is that same spirit that called Christ from the grave, that raised Christ from the dead. That same spirit in Genesis chapter 1 that says that when God created the heavens and the earth, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and then the same spirit that now lives within us, it hovered about the earth and it was void and it was in darkness. And that same spirit is living within our hearts, our minds, if we accept it to come in to our hearts and in our minds. How and where does it live within our hearts? First Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19. Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and, and in, 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 in whom he dwells, uh, even within our hearts. Now we know that the Spirit of God, we follow him. The Spirit of God can change our mindset, transform our mind. The Spirit of God, we can walk in him. The Spirit of God, we can follow him. Now, the Spirit of God even led Christ in Matthew chapter 4. And the Bible says that, and he was led of the Spirit of God, and it led him into the desert. When we go through the desert, it does not mean the absence of the Spirit. For we follow him wherever he goes. We follow him wherever he leads us. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 up to verse 6, for we must trust in him with all our hearts and with all our understanding, because this spirit is a spirit of wisdom. He is always there before us, and he knows things that must happen even before they happen. Now, in verse 14, it then says, Now, as many as are led by that spirit, they are called the sons of God. John chapter 1, verse 1, excuse me, John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, as many as are called, they are given the power to be the sons and the children of God. Now, when we follow this spirit, we become the children of God. We learn in John chapter 1, being a child of God is not simply just a title, but it is a title of an empowerment. It is a title that puts us in a place where suddenly, when life brings situations and trials against us, because trials come whether you believe in God or not. The difference when trials come with you believing in God is that it finds a person who is empowered to deal with trouble. And now how do we deal with trouble? How are we empowered? In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 up to verse 5, it says that for, the, for we do not fight as them that are in the flesh. Come on, we remember, we are not in the flesh. For when we are in the flesh, we remain condemned in the flesh. No matter what we do, no matter what we believe in, but if we are in the flesh, we remain condemned in the flesh. James chapter 2, for the demons also believe, they remain condemned, though they believe that Jesus is the same. But what makes a difference is that we do not remain in the flesh, but we then, from that flesh, we then die and we live in the spirit and we live in Christ. We follow him in the spirit and we have the mind of the spirit and we follow his spirit, accept his calling, and we are given the power to now be called the sons and the daughters of God, because we are given that power. 
And now, if we are then sons and daughters of God, and, and I only say sons and daughters so that we can have gender equality, but scripture sticks to sons because those were the people of privilege. Those were the people of inheritance. Those were the people that the name of the father gets passed on. Now, when we are in Christ, there is neither male nor female in Galatians. There is neither, uh, uh, there is, there is neither Greek nor Gentile. Therefore, being all sons, male and female, the same way the Bible says that all men, meaning humanity, Therefore, even when it comes to sons, the Bible speaks to the sons and the daughters of God, those who accept him as his children, because uh, Christ is the only son of God. Therefore, we become sons together with him in a figurative context that we become children of God. And then we being sons of God, are then joint heirs together with Christ. If then we are joint heirs together with Christ, and if then he suffers, we suffer with him. We suffer together with Christ. Suffering goes with the leading of the spirit. It is part of our journey. You see, friends, God chose that there be no refining of character without trouble being the refinery machine for trouble is that instrument that turns every loose bolt, every vehicle, every machinery as it works, as it moves, things become loose. A, a, a equipment starts to fail, but trouble takes us, takes us to service. Trouble refines us. Trouble change filters in us. Trouble changes oil that is dirty in us. Trouble tightens all the loose bolts in us. Then suddenly, when we are now starting to lose our minds, we come back to our senses. Then suddenly, when we are starting to not appreciate the blessings and the things that God has done for us, then suddenly we cry together with Paul, in Romans 5 verse 3, that we glory even in tribulation because trouble worketh patience. Now patience teaches us that we must have experience and experience gives us hope, and that hope is in Christ Jesus. So therefore, friends, when we are in Christ, we will suffer together with him. We have been warned that trouble is part of our journey. Trouble will be part of who we are as we walk this journey. There are two roads to choose from. Matthew 7 tells us the one is narrow and the one is wide. The book, Sermons on the Mount of Blessings, there is no road that is without potholes. Both of them have got potholes. Both of them have got thorns and thistles. Though both of them have got valleys, both of them have got hilltops and mountains, but one is going down and the other is going up. The potholes are on the way up and on the other, the potholes are on the way down. You choose with whom you shall suffer. But we all get sick. We all lose loved ones. COVID affects all of us. <clears throat> COVID has been with all of us. We've lost loved ones. We've lost pastors. We've lost good people. For that matter, if the register of those who must die would have come from us, we know whom we, have, we would have started with. But the Lord has not left it to us. In fact, the drunkards and those that live carelessly continue to live their lives while those that are righteous seem to be trusting in God are dying and are, and are sleeping the sleep of death. Now, being in Christ, being joined as with him, Romans 8, 18 then tells us that though we may suffer, 
but we know that the sufferings of this present time cannot be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. So though we suffer now, though we suffer now, but waiting for us, and that something waiting for us is glory. And that glory, it is <clears throat> the trouble we go through now cannot be compared. In other words, compared to the glory that shall be revealed, not to us, uh, but in us, in other words, when he appears, we shall be like him. His glory shall be reflected on us, in us, and we shall be glorified. And when that happens, when that happens, it says, and then the sufferings of this present time, then suddenly they shall be nothing but our light affliction. Then our problems suddenly we may be hard pressed on side, but we will not be crushed. When suddenly we now see God's glory in us, we will understand verses such as 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, that says that when we behold him, we behold him as in a glass, and we are changed from glory to glory. We may be changed with that glory within us today, but it shall be seen in us one day, people shall look at us and they shall see the glory of God. But now we have this glory in earthen vessels. And these earthen vessels, they suffer, they break, and they get sick. But it has nonetheless the glory of God in us. Come with me and now appreciate Romans 28, verse 28. 6 then says to us, now, the spirit by which we are called the sons of God, by which Christ was raised from the dead, by which our mind is transformed, by which we follow the lamb for wherever he goes, by which we walk in Christ, that same spirit now searches our hearts. With, and it searches our heart with groanings that cannot be uttered with words that even us in our own mind, we cannot express it accurately to God, what we are going through, what we are struggling with, what we want even for ourselves, but the spirit searches our hearts. But now appreciate 28. Now 28 then says, now all these, now all these, the good, the bad, the big, the small, the evil, and the good, everything that happens to us, for us, around us, with us, and everything that happens. Now, all these things, they happen together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. Let me start with the calling. What is the calling? The calling is a calling to repentance. John preached, he said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. When Jesus came, he says, I have come not to call righteous to repentance, but to call sinners to repentance. When Peter and the apostles were preaching in Pentecost, in the book of Acts, they asked him, what must we do? And Peter answered, says, the Lord calls you to repentance. Acts chapter 17, the Lord has now, uh, he, he, he went at the times of ignorance in times past, but he now calls all of us to repentance. The calling that God is calling us to is not to be preachers. It is not to be evangelists. It is not to be Adventists, but it is to be repented Christians. For, for, to be called an Adventist, is not a guarantee that we are repentant, for there are many who were Israelites. And then suddenly, Paul writes in Romans chapter 9, and he says, not all that are of Israel are of Israel, because the actions determine who you are. The condition of the mind determines who you are. The condition of the heart determines who you are. God is calling us to repentance. That spirit searches our hearts 
Why? It searches for a repented heart. It searches for a repented mind. And he says then, after searching our hearts, after searching our hearts, he takes all these with groanings that no words can utter. And he then, after searching our hearts, then Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, he says, then the Lord now is faithful. He weighs everything that comes to us. How does he weigh everything that comes to us? In that he will not allow anything to come our way that is above what we can bear. How does he search us? How does he know that we will not be able to bear because he searches our hearts? And before he allows all things, there is the searching of the heart first that must happen. Before all things come our way, the heart has been searched. Do not despair. Why do you question? Why do you ask yourself, why are all these things happening to me? Why do you ask yourself, why is this happening to me? Why must I go through this? God searched your heart and he is faithful in that he will not allow that you go through something that is above what you can bear. This is the beauty of this verse of Romans chapter 8, verse 28, that all things that happen to us happen together for good to those who love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. Let us repent. The business of all things working out is not our business. It is the Lord's business. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Focus on getting your heart right. Focus on getting your mind right. Focus on being right with God, and he will focus on all things. Things are not to be our focus. Things around us are not to be our focus. Things happening to us are not to be our focus. Don't focus on things happening to you, happening to you, around you. Focus on the one who has called you. And our thing is simple. Let us repent. We have a message for our time. That message is begun by the first angel's message. Fear God and give glory to him and worship him who created the heavens and the earth. The best glory we can give to God is for his character to be seen in us and that the character of Christ be seen in our lives. May God bless you. Shall we close our eyes in prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, Lord, it is only you who knows us, who knows our hearts, who knows who we are, who knows where we come from. At this time, we pray that may you continue to search our hearts. At this time, we pray, but may your mind may be our mind. May our hearts be recreated. May you give us the right spirit. May you help us to walk in the right path. May you help us to focus only on our faith. May you increase our faith that we may walk in your path. We pray in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Um, we would like to thank the Lord for the message given to us today. We are quickly going to jump into our prayer segment quickly. Uh, if there's anyone who's having any prayer request, any, any uh, testimony, we are then going to quickly jump, jump into that before we finally close our program. After the prayer request and the testimonies, Elder Ati, may you please pray for, uh, for us and also close our program with a word of prayer. Now, it's, uh, now is the time for um, prayer requests. Is there any prayer request? 
then you will be taking it. Um, even if you type it, yeah, I will see it. And also with our speaker, if our speaker is having any prayer request, any testimony, any prayer of thanks, please feel free to chip in. Um, this, this time is for everyone. Any prayer request, testimonies? Okay, there's a prayer of thanks that just came in from Sister Namisa. Uh, prayer of gratitude that the nephew was dedicated today. That's from Elder Ati. If there's no, um, if can we can we pray for for the current state of affairs in the country? Um, um, let's pray for those who are affected and infected by by this virus, by this virus, um, and also all those families that have lost uh, their loved ones. It's um, it's been tough, uh, guys. So I think let's just remember them in our prayers, and may we also pray for the branch um, that as we continue to engage in uh, such programs that we may all be changed uh, because Christ is coming again. And it's my prayer that uh, when he comes that he finds us ready. That's all from my side, thank you. Okay, Sister Kulegazi is having a prayer for healing. She is saying that her throat is sore and she can't swallow the food. And also she is having a prayer request for traveling messes for the sister who is traveling to Cape Town. If there is no other prayer request or any testimony, then we'll give it over to our elder, who is then going to pray for us and also close our program for us for today. Um, thank you. Shall we bow our heads and pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this blessed Sabbath you have granted us. We thank you for once again keeping your word that you will tabernacle with us on this day. We have indeed felt your presence. We have been blessed by the various messages and everything else that you have, um, you had in store for us, including the farewell message of this evening. May we be strengthened. May we be revived as we go into the new week. We ask in a special way that you hear the prayer requests of your children, which have been presented uh, we have a prayer of thanks uh, by Sister Ngamisa. We ask, Lord, that um, you continue to be with her. And we thank you for having um, answered uh, whatever prayers uh, that she may have had for her to um, express her gratitude. We would also like to pray for healing for Sister Kulagazi. Um, may you continue to touch her with your healing hand and bring her to full recovery. Uh, we pray also for traveling mercies for her sister um, who will be traveling from Cape Town uh, coming up to Joburg. We ask also in a special way, Lord, that you bless the, 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 the branch as we continue, Lord, to um, grow from strength to strength. Uh, may you bless each and every one of the members and may you meet the members in their point of need. And uh, we also would like to pray for the members that um, have been following from Facebook and YouTube and um, certain other parts that we may not even be aware of, given that um, the digital content can reach as far as possible. We pray, Lord, that um, every member and every person who has been receiving these messages uh, may be touched and drawn closer to you as we continue to prepare for your soon coming. We pray for our nephew as well, who got uh, dedicated earlier today. We would like to thank you for this huge milestone as um, um, he has been dedicated to your service. May you continue to be with him as he develops in wisdom and, and in strength and in favor. Uh, may you continue to grow. May you forgive us, Heavenly Father, of all our sins and all our trespasses, we pray that um, when all is said and done, all our names are written in uh, the book of life. We do want to be among those who will meet your son Jesus when he appears in the sky. We ask Lord that um, as we start the new week, you've already 
planned the new week for us. You've already gone ahead. You already know what's lying ahead. Therefore, give us that confidence and boldness of knowing that we need not panic. We need not be afraid. Uh, we need not uh, move with uncertainty for you have moved already before us. We thank you. May your Holy Spirit abide with each and every one of us. Bless everyone who's here as well as all of the families that are represented by the members who've logged in here both on Facebook as well as here on Zoom and beyond. We thank you and ask all of this in the loving name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Elder Ati, for, 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 the, for, the, for the prayer. And we are closing our programs. We, program, we have uh, finished our program. And we, we would like to thank the Lord for all the messages and we'd like to also ask the Lord to be with each and every one of us as we are starting this week so that uh, we may be able to meet again in these platforms. But if it happens that we don't meet on these platforms, may we be within the number of God's children that will be going to heaven. Uh, may we be blessed as we start our week. In Jesus' name, amen.